Surely I have turned myself to thee, O Allah, striving to be upright to thee who originated the heavens and the earth, and I am not of the polytheists. Surely my prayer, my sacrifice, my life and my death are all for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. No associate has thee. Of this I am commanded and I am of those who submit. O oh Allah, thou art the king, and there is no God but thee. Thou art my Lord, and I am thy servant. I have been greatly unjust to myself, and I confess my faults. So please grant me protection against all my faults. For none can grant me protection against all my faults but thee. And guide me into the best of morals. For none can guide me into the best of morals but thee. And turn away from me. The evil and indecent morals. For none can turn away from me the evil and indecent morals but thee. O oh Allah, make Muhammad successful. And make the true followers of Muhammad successful. Here in the wilderness of North America. As thou did make Abraham and the true followers of Abraham successful. For surely thou art praised and magnified. O oh Allah, bless Muhammad and bless the true followers of Muhammad. Here in the wilderness of North America, as thou did bless Abraham and the true followers of Abraham. For surely thou art praised and magnified in our midst. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah who came in person, who came in the person of Master Farah Muhammad. I bear witness that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is the last and greatest messenger of that God. We open up our meetings in prayer. It is to be understood that the Allah that we mention in our prayer is none other than Master Farad Muhammad. We pray for the success of his messenger, Muhammad. But when we say Muhammad, we mean the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. We pray for his success. We pray for the success of his true followers. The true followers are only helping the honorable Elijah Muhammad. So the success of the true followers is the success of the messenger because we are only helping the messenger. We need clarity today. There's too much going on, too much being taught, too much being thought on under the guise of Nation of Islam. The Nation of Islam is whatever Elijah taught, whatever Elijah practiced, whatever Elijah instituted. There were many things that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that he didn't institute into his program. Elijah is the master psychologist, the hand-picked choice of Almighty God. His way is the only way. He said himself, I am the way. And then former students of his say now that they are the way. See, we need clarity today. The time dictates such 
This is the day of separation. This is the great day of separation. Everyone will go to their own. Don't claim Elijah today if you are not following his way. Call your path something else because you're not going this way. This is the day of separation. There will be a great separation of the blacks and the whites in this land. If you are not going the way of Elijah, you are going the opposite way. There's but one victor. But there is many vanquished. You have to choose today which way you shall go. The confusion is expected today. 40 years after Moses and the people were wandering on. 40 years after Elijah and the people are yet wandering on. But Elijah is the way. You make mock that we are few in number. But Elijah Muhammad is correct. Has always been correct. He said in that day. In front of hundreds of thousands of those who. Were going that way. Of Elijah. He said that in that day. What day? The day where he said that yet. The worst is yet to come. That's today. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said in front of hundreds of thousands that claimed him as their leader, meaning they're going that way. He said that in that day, You'd be able to fit my followers in a taxi cab. That's today. This is the taxi cab era. No, we don't make excuses for being few in number. We make sense of the time. You must understand that we are those who hang on to every word of Elijah. So when he said that in this time today, that his followers would be able to fit in a taxi cab, not a tour bus, a taxi cab. When he said that, we hung on to that. Because he is the messenger of Allah. He don't speak or teach idle words. That's what you do. That's what we do among ourselves. But this one was taught face to face by God himself. That he would become the reflection of that God. That God is the truth. This one, this messenger of his is the light of truth. There is no blemish in this one. He's the spotless lamb. He is the one who was made with the right material.
He teaches us of the time. He said, no matter what we choose as our subject, we are always dealing with the theology of time. I love black people. I'm a black man. I love black people. Regardless to whichever way you think you shall go, you have the freedom to do that. My religion is freedom just as any quality. You have the freedom to choose today. You're supposed to choose today because this is the valley of decision that we are choosing in today. I love black people. But if you are going in the opposite direction of Elijah, the light of truth, then you are going the wrong way. Sure, we can argue back and forth over it, but why waste time? If you understand the time, you will understand that we are down to the final moments. We don't lose time searching for that that does not exist. And understanding between you and I does not exist. Therefore, I will lose no time in arguing with you. Go your way. But because we're dealing with the theology of time, it is theologically where you and I differ. Because I stand on the proper interpretation that was given to us by Allah God himself through his messenger, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. He was raised to teach us the proper interpretation. No one else was raised by God himself. But Elijah, the interpretation of your dreams, the interpretation of your ideas, or that of your own, Elijah was raised to give us his interpretation, which was taught to him face by face, face to face, face up, face down. By Almighty God, Allah, Master Farah Muhammad. We've forgotten that today. It is because of that forgetfulness that we are now in the taxi cab era. We make no excuses. We make soldiers for Muhammad. Once they choose correctly, we have nothing to do with that. There will be no compulsion. Our duty is to keep the lights on to drag you in off the battlefield. This is for any black man and woman who was going the opposite way of Elijah today. That star in that crescent in our flag on this actual facts board serves as a clock. That crescent is at the first quarter, not the last quarter of the old world Islam. Most of you claim a nation of Islam is going backwards. That's the opposite direction. The light is shining over here with Elijah. Our question, our crescent, pardon me, is in the beginning stages because we are now at the beginning of the black man's time in history to become the one world ruler. 
there will be no more uniting of the flags. There will be only one flag, the flag of Islam. Some of you in the name of Elijah. Some of you in the name of Master Farah Muhammad. Some of you in the name of the mighty nation of Islam are now raising a new flag to signify one star among you. This is what your own hands have created. Allah, Master Farah Muhammad brought us one flag. If that flag is to represent your man, then where's the flag for Master Farah Muhammad and his messenger, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad? This is why we need clarity today. Allah, God is the light. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad is the reflection of their light. We are going to keep the lights on. You've been robbed of your time pieces. This is why your theology is broken up into 10 million different pieces combined of all sorts of things opposite of what the God gave his messenger mixed up stirred like Morris Black Kool-Aid the projects located in the hood where I'm from There's only one way. There's only one truth. Truth is sufficient. I open up in the name of Allah, God, Master Farah Muhammad. I open up in the name of his messenger, the most humble and honorable Elijah Muhammad. This is the victor and the vanquished. Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah. who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, the one God who was not only Lord, but is, in fact, the Lord of Lords. He is Lord of all the worlds. To be Lord of anything that Lord must be present. That Lord must be active and possessing will. He's a purposeful Lord. He is the Lord, a man of war. This man is Master Farad Muhammad. This war is the war of Armageddon. That final war. That war involving all flags and religions. The war where involvement means the doom of all but one flag and one religion. The war of Armageddon is the direct response to the question posed in Revelation 13 and 4. 
6,000 years ago, the question was written. Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Allah God in person, Master Farad Muhammad, that man of war of Exodus 15 and 3. The question is, who is able to make war with the beast? Not negotiate, not make deals or even become recognized as the latest Negro bunch at the UN. The question is, who is able to make war with the enemy beast? This is a real war in real time involving real combatants. If only one is able, if only one is to survive then the survivor must also be real. He is a man. He is a man of war. He is the man born 146 years ago. The man, the son of man, whose presence would cause signs and wonders in the sun, moon, and in the stars. So teaches Jesus in the book of Luke. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven have been shaken and then they say and then they and then they see the 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 son of man coming in the cloud with power and great glory The son of man comes at a time when the nations of the earth are distressed. He comes at a time of perplexity. Holy Quran, chapter 103. By the time, surely man is in loss. Perplexed. Unsure, uncertain, without knowledge, clueless. The question mark on the board here. All would be lost except those who believe and do good and exhort one another to truth and exhort one another to patience. Exhort is a verb. Meaning action, activity, meaning to strongly encourage or urge someone to do something. We have the truth. Allah came in person and personally handed us the truth. We strongly encourage the loss of our people to decide. As we all are in the valley of decision. We all are. We urge you to decide on truth or falsehood. We urge you to decide on the true and living God or the immaterial mystery God. Which one 
will survive the war of Armageddon. We urge you to answer that most dire question because it's time. This son of man, this man of war, whose presence would cause signs in the sun, moon, and in the stars, was once a baby, was once a little boy born February 26, 1877, 146 years ago, to seek and to save his chosen people lost in time lost in the wilderness at the time of their saving. Seven months after the wonderful birth of this great and wonderful redeemer, Mars closed in on opposition as she advanced closer toward the sun, becoming 141,500,000 miles in distance from the sun. Before 1877, Mars was thought to have no moon. But in August of that year, Deimos and Phobos, Phobos, the two moons of the Martian world would be discovered. There will be signs. The universe would be in agreement with the birth of this one, with the presence of this one. You can keep these other ones coming in his name, coming in his title, but have no meaning. In the universe, in according with the time. The sun, moon, and stars showing signs of agreement with the timely birth of our Savior, the God of Elijah, Master Farad Muhammad, that man of war. He who commands the mighty nation of Islam through his messenger, the most humble and honorable Elijah Muhammad. He who commands the forces of nature in defense and retaliation of that mighty nation of Islam against their enemies. Because the earth's greatest arms are fire and water. Allah gathers these arms as the arm armies, the armed armies of the earth gather together for the final war, which is the final plague. The final plague, according, according to scripture, is death. Immense carnage. I open up in the name of our Savior, Master Farah Muhammad, and in the name of our safety zone, Messenger Elijah Muhammad. We don't need a band-aid today. We need a Savior today. Assalamu alaikum. I, on behalf of Muhammad's Temple of Islam number 18, here in the city of Cleveland, Ohio, pray that you had a blessed Savior's Day 2023. I thank Allah, Master Farad Muhammad, for not just being able to see another Savior's Day, but also for seeing no other savior as the savior but the savior 
Master Farah Muhammad on his day and every day. I say all praise is due to Allah for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us of Allah. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us of the Savior, the true Savior, not the self-styled Savior who fights for recognition in the seat at the U.N., those nations are united or gathered together for what is coming to them against them. They have more pressing business than to look over your paperwork. They know that that paperwork, that paperwork, along with everything else in that file cabinet, will ultimately go up in flames. This is the time that we living in. The fight is not for recognition today. The fight is for separation today. That's the way of Elijah. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad warns us to separate from our enemies and to get out the way of their doom. To come out of her. The self-styled savior says to integrate with the enemy at the United Nations. Where we ultimately share in their doom as they are united and gathered against the true savior. Elijah said to come out of her. This one says, let's go into her and have a seat. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that Allah did not come to put the white man in no church nor in a mosque. And Allah did not come to put the black man in the U.N., Allah came to make war with the beast and to separate the black man from the beast. Who is the beast? The man of sin, the son of perdition. Who is Allah? The man of war, the son of man. This is the clashing of good versus evil, the righteous versus the wicked, truth versus falsehood, the victor and the vanquished. In the battle between God and the disbelievers in the days of Noah, so teaches messenger Elijah Muhammad, the victor's weapon was water. He used fire in the case of Sodom and Gomorrah. In the battle against Pharaoh, he used 10 different weapons that included fire, water, hailstorms, and great armies of the insect world and droughts, and finally plagued them with death. The whole Quran says that the chastisement of Pharaoh was like that which God would use against his enemies in the last days. These are the last days. We're up against a Pharaoh-like enemy. This enemy isn't interested in your 
human rights nor your uh, competitive egg prices. This enemy is only interested in keeping you swallowed up so that when his body dies, you too will die within him. Your farmland, your garden won't survive this war. It won't survive this war, black man. Get back in tune with your messenger. Old MacDonald had a farm that won't suffice him neither. Old Muhammad has a program, the Muslim program, which represents preparedness on a more vast scale. We can't talk about preparedness and survival of a war without talking about survival kits. We must be ready. We must be prepared. This is that time. Purchase thermometers, both oral and rectal. Stock up on your aspirin, rubbing alcohol, adhesive tape. Get gauze, band-aids, all sizes, Epsom salt, the largest boxes, baking soda, Burn ointment, ice caps, sulfur, powder, spirit of peppermint, milk of magnesia, hot water bottles, cotton ball, scissors, big and small for cutting bandages, first aid instructions, sanitary napkins. Good, strong, disinfected like Lysol, charcoal, the barbecue type. Pulverized charcoal, take two layers of cotton, put charcoal between them, dampen, and use that as a gas mask. Get canned heat sternals, a sternal stove. A Coleman stove that uses kerosene. You sure to find them in the camping stores where most white folks shop at. Get a kerosene lamp, candles, matches, transistor radio, plenty of batteries, flashlights, wool blankets, the army type. This is a time of war. Get sheets for bandages. Get axes and the shovel for disposal of waste material. And shit, you have to bury your dead. Keep newspapers, cardboard boxes, plywood. For making splints. Keep Q-tips. Plenty of food. Plenty of water. Keep beans. Stored in metal cans. With copper nails. Whole wheat flour. Stock up on that. And rice. Keep cat litter. Keep your storage of supply six inches off the floor. Rotate every three months. Most of these supplies can be purchased at hardware and camping stores where most white folks shop at. Keep sleeping bags. You know what? 
just report to your local Muhammad's Temple of Islam for further instruction. Come learn who is the beast. Come learn who are the allies of the beast. Come learn how to survive what is coming to the beast. And learn who it is that is not only able to make war with the beast, but who has already declared himself victor over the beast. Master Farad Muhammad. Allah God in person. We lack wisdom today. Allah came in person and gave us supreme wisdom. We've been going the wrong way, so we lack wisdom of the supreme kind. But here's wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Why must we? <laughs> I'm not sure if any of us even ask this question, but why must we count the number of the beast? It is because if we count the number of the beast, we can then place him in time. If we count the number of the beast with understanding of the supreme wisdom, we know his beginning, his ending, and the time allotted him to rule. 600, three score, and six. 600 is the number of years it took to make or produce this beast, this man of sin, this son of perdition. The score is 20. Three scores equals 60. 60 equals the 59,999 black men and women, plus their leader, Yaku, making 60,000. 60,000 original people total that was used to make the artificial white man the beast in human form. The last six is the 6,000 years that this beast was given to rule. The sun is what is used to clock and calculate time and motion. The white man came into being trillions of years after time and motion began. So the white man, though he is making motion today, he hasn't a number of his own because time preceded him. He is on borrowed time, borrowed time of the black man, the original man. Who preceded him. It is the number of a man. What man? The black man. The white man is an artificial man. He doesn't have creating abilities. He makes things out of material already created. To make anything is to begin with material already created. To create, however, is to begin from essence. We don't create cups of coffee. We make cups of coffee because everything we needed to make it was already created. The white man does not have creating abilities. He himself was not created. He was made. The essence of the original man who preceded him was used to make him. 
He is a made man, the artificial man, the carbon copy of the original man. He was made by the original man, the black man, on the black man's planet and on the black man's time. Messenger Elijah Muhammad teaches us that it was six trillion years from the spark, then rotating of the very first atom the very first and only atom of life in the darkness of space came the creation of the sun. That's our six. That's our number. That's our time. Because only we were here to make that time. That time was calculated by our motion. The white man's flag begins with a red stripe, which represents the sun. That means time was being made before his appearance on our planet. The first white stripe follows the red stripe to indicate that the white man is the newest man in the light of the sun there are five more white stripes totaling six five more white stripes totaling six white stripes which indicate the white man's time in our sun on our planet which is 6,000 years. That's why the final stripe is red and not white. In between the first and last white stripe or red stripes representing the blood he was shed for that 6,000 years. The removal of the blood shedder is justified by the laws of Islam, the laws of freedom, justice, and equality. The enslavement of the black man, the injustice and affliction of the black man, the segregation of the black man while leaving him completely dependent upon the white man. <laughs> the perpetrator justifies the removal of the white man. Let there be light. That's a thought. That's a voice. That's a command all attributed to man. Jehovah means I am the one who is. The man comes first because the man is going to summon up a desire to make light and illuminate that vast measure of darkness. As with a lot of day in the person of Master Farah Muhammad, he comes at the darkest hour of the night. He comes as the light after 6,000 years of darkness. He comes as the Prince of Peace to restore peace after overcoming the prince of darkness, the Caucasian white man. This is the victor and the vanquished. This is universal war before universal peace. The peace breaker 
must be removed. Therefore, rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has but a short time. Those who rejoice are those who are not under the immediate rule of the devil. These are those who kind of understand. Woe is great sorrow, distress, slavery, suffering, death. The only reality for the black man under the rule of the white man, the man of sin, the devil himself. This is the made man, Adam, of the book of Genesis. Adam was given dominion over the fish of the sea and everything that creeps, crawls, and walks on the earth. Six days he was given the rule. Six days according to both Bible and Quran is 6,000 years as both books teach that uh, a day to God is a thousand years. 6,000 years of world dominance. This white man knows that his time is up. He knows that his time has all but expired. He's angry. He always knew that he had but a short time limited to just 6,000 years versus the black man's limitless time in infinity. Thomas Jefferson once commander in chief of the United States of America, he once said, indeed, I tremble for my country when I reflect that God is just. That his justice cannot sleep forever. This man owned the Quran. This man was of the Masonic order. Once you graduate from that Bible to that Quran, it's all assalamu alaikum from that point. His understanding of God is no different than my understanding of God that he is just and his justice cannot sleep forever. Oh, it slept for 6,000 years globally. But it slept for 400 years here in America for the black man, personally. God's justice was awakened at the birth of our Savior, Master Farah Muhammad, God in person. February 26, 1877. The God of freedom, justice, and equality. The God of retribution. The Lord, the man of war, the victor of that war, as he is set to defeat the vanquished, the reason for this war. The beast is the head of the world's largest religion called Christianity. The head or father of the church is the Pope of Rome. The same beast that Imam W. Dean Muhammad, son of Messenger Elijah Muhammad now, who opposed Messenger Elijah Muhammad on the reality of God, met with at the Vatican in October of 1996. 
You must pay attention. You must know the time. Messenger Elijah Muhammad teaches us that as Moses stood before Pharaoh, representing the law as the Lord of the worlds, the proud, wicked Pharaoh mocked the idea by suggesting that he would build a tower to attack Moses' God. And Pharaoh said, oh, Haman, build for me a tower that I may attain the means of access to the heavens that I may reach the God of Moses for I surely think him to be a liar that's holy Quran 40 messenger Elijah Muhammad said this Haman must have been Pharaoh's chief construction engineer of the war department hmm. Wallace Dean Muhammad in the proud wicked spirit of Pharaoh mocked the idea of his father being the messenger of Allah he mocked the idea that his father is the Lord. That his father's Lord is the Lord of the world. See, his son mocked the idea of that. And so he had his own idea. As to the reality of God. Which is no reality because it's a mystery God. But his idea of God and his idea for the people of his father, which the true and living God placed him charge of. You must understand the time. Those of you who count us out because our numbers are down. Those of you who count us down for the count. You speak from a place of ignorance. You don't know the time. Nowhere you be is the time being told. You're mad at no guest. You're mad at 10 guests that show up from 10 different cities on Savior's Day. You're ignorant at best. You don't know the time. Elijah stood in front of us for 40 plus years with that crown on. That crescent in his crown serves as a clock. It tells you what time it is. We at the beginning of the black man's time in history to become the one world ruler. Wallace Dean Muhammad worked fast. He knew he had but a short time. This white man, this devil, he worked fast for these past 6,000 years because he knew he had but a short time. The truth alone is sufficient. We don't give a damn about no numbers. Not in the way that you give a damn about numbers. 
We love everyone standing with us because we are all standing for Elijah in his God's name, Master Farah Muhammad. We take care of our own. We don't need you. You were counted out. This is the taxi cab era. It ain't you counting us out. We counting you out. You the fool. We have the truth. While Dean Muhammad mocked the idea that his father's Lord is the Lord of the worlds. Wallace, having power and rule over the nation of Islam after the departure of his father, lacked influence. Just as Pharaoh ordered Haman to build a tower that he may attain the means of access to the heavens that Pharaoh may reach the God of Moses. Wallace ordered the name change of Minister Louis Farrakhan to email Abdul Halim Farrakhan. Wallace ordered Halim, the chief representative of Wallace, to teach and build a large enough platform to influence the believers to deny the reality of God, the God of Elijah, to accept the mystery God of Wallace, the wicked Pharaoh type ruler. He assisted him. This is history. Learn your nation. Can't charge most of you without knowing. We charge your lieutenant. It's his duty to teach you your religion. must know the time Wallace through Halim just like Pharaoh through Haman reached the God of Elijah in the hearts and minds of the believers and removed him dethroned him This was the return of the mystery God concept that Allah, through his messenger, came to dismantle. This is a warning for the minds. Which one will survive the war of Armageddon? That's today. This is the day of decision in the valley of decision under the very shadow of death. Accept truth and live. Hear truth and live. Reject truth and die. So teaches messenger Elijah Muhammad, the last and greatest messenger of Allah. Master Farad Muhammad to whom praise is due forever. Those who reject the truth are those who indirectly give power to this beast. Those who reject the truth are they who worship the dragon who directly gives power to the beast taught us in a cartoons about dragons 
didn't they? They taught us that the brave Christian knights fought and slayed these uh, fire-breathing dragons. Yeah, we're going to get into the Christian knights of the Ku Klux Klan, but that's another subject for another time. We talking about the first Christian knights that they sent to us, our generation. They sent those Christian knights to us in the cartoons to play on our subconscious that these white men brave enough to fight fire breathing dragons that does not exist. These are just more lies of the white man. He's the father of lies. If I deceive your child, you're justified in blowing my brains out to lead your child to destruction. Yet here it is, this man has reared your children from the womb to this side of reality. It was his medication. It was his doctors and nurses you went to during your pregnancy. You trusted him, the world's enemy, with your vulnerable seed. And then you stand proud to dispute with the God who came in person to see to it that you make it to safety. How dare you? They taught us in cartoons. That's that pricking of the baby's uh, brain. At such a tender age with a tender brain. We set our babies down in front of that death machine that would eventually raise us. Oh yeah, mommy, daddy watching the child grow up, but it's actually the television. It's actually the cell phone that's raising our children. There's a disconnect somewhere. This is the time Elijah is given to us from God himself. So teaches the book of Malachi. The son of this messenger is to turn the hearts of the children back to the fathers and the hearts of the fathers back to the children. He comes to connect that which is already disconnected. We know it ain't the cell phone that's disconnected because we make sure we pay those bills. But the disconnect is coming in between that which we are keeping connected. Our children ain't connected to the true and living God. Our children are connected to the society of the white man. They ain't tell us that those Christian knights were actually warring with Muslims during that time of the Crusades. They replaced the Muslims with dragons 
to erase us from history. So we now, as children, we grow up not knowing the dragon of the cartoons were Muslims. But the dragon of the scripture is the enemy of the Muslims. The dragon is the white man and the beast is his world church of Christianity and his wicked world government. He's dragging on land in the water and in the airspace. He blows fire on the land with his city issue service weapons as police officers. He poisons the water with fluoride. He poisons the water like he did in Flint. He poisons the marine life of the sea, making the fish and the salmon unfit to eat. He's Godzilla of the sea. He poisons the air we breathe. He sells us death. He's the merchant of death. His fighter jets and helicopter gunships dominate the skies, blowing fire on all enemies of theirs. Brother Minister Alonzo X talked very eloquently during his Savior's Day 2023 address of the mother plane. He gave it straight from the messenger. That's when your antennas are supposed to go way up. But you want to half listen. If you want to half listen, half listen when your pastor is preaching. He's only preaching half Jesus. If you want to half listen, half listen when your leader is speaking. He's only giving you half Elijah. Listen closely and carefully when the messenger is speaking, writing, or quoting. It is he that we receive teaching, training, and instruction from none else. Messenger Elijah Muhammad teaches us of the battle in the sky. Page 293 in the section titled The Battle in the Sky. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad writes, The final war between Allah, God, and the devil is dangerously close. And you want to have listened to that I'm not talking about the guests we have here tonight. I'm talking about those who over large periods of time, years, clapping and shouting all praises due to Allah for the honor boy Elijah Muhammad. The final war between Allah and the devil is dangerously close. If you believed that you'd be more in accord with the time we see more activity out of you not just popping up in the comment section The 
the honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that the final war between a lot God and the devils is dangerously close. The very least amount of friction can bring it into action within minutes. And you plan. The war of Armageddon is not a time of flying white doves in love with the whole of humanity, which is insanity. Bodies will pile up. There is no such thing as getting ready for this most terrible and dreadful war. They are ready. Preparation for the battle between man and man or nations has been made and carried out on land and water for the past 6,000 years. This ain't new, but this is it. No more after this one. One victor, one survivor. Man has now become very wise, so teaches the honorable Elijah Muhammad, and has learned many of the secrets of nature, which make the old battles with swords and bows and air rolls look like child's play. He said, since 1914, which was the end of the time given to the devils, the white race to rule the original people, the black nation, man has been preparing for a final showdown in the skies. He has made a remarkable advancement in everything pertaining to a deadly, destructive war in the sky. But Allah, the best of planners, have a perfect knowledge of his enemies prepared for their destruction long ago, even before they were made. He said, Thanks to Allah, to whom eternal praise is due, who came in the flesh and the blood. He has been for more than 70 years now, 128 years, but he has been for more than 70 years making himself ready for the final war. What do you mean? The war of Armageddon has begun. The war of Armageddon has been on. That's that half mile by half mile mother plane that Brother Minister spoke of. I'm sure he told you. I mean, if you were listening. I'm sure Brother Minister told you that this is not a mother ship. This is a mother plane. This is the mother of all planes. It should be plain to you now after sitting up under the true believers and the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. It should be plain to you today. That this ain't George Clinton. The costumes that you wear. The costumes that George Clinton and them wear. The games that all of you play. Those ain't costumes over here. They uniforms. We understand the time. 
Y'all think it's playtime. The mother plane that messenger Elijah Muhammad warns the world of. Right now, China is preparing for modern warfare to fight from 60 miles above the Earth's surface. See that number 60 again? They call it near space. Near space is a place in the stratosphere that's too low for satellites and too high for jets. In 2014, then Chinese president, see, he urged and encouraged two. But he urged and encouraged China, his people, to speed up air and space integration and sharpen their offensive and defensive capabilities. The Negro was only interested in integrating with white people. This wise, militant-minded man here, he urged and encouraged his people to speed up air and space integration and sharpen their offensive and defensive capabilities. In 2018, the Chinese official newspaper was headed, near space has become a battlefield in modern warfare. All praise is due to Allah for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. What does this sound like? The great decisive battle in the sky that the messenger warned us of for over four decades. He said the battle in the sky is near. That's today. The mother plane is the answer to the battle in the sky. One half mile by one half mile. The mother plane is fueled by oxygen and hydrogen, which allows it to stay <laughs> out of the Earth's gravity for six months to a year this ain't child's play this ain't playtime Elijah's God is all wise he's not capable of building a defense against those who want to fight and have a showdown in near space The same type of plane was used by the original God to put mountains on his planets. Messenger Elijah Muhammad teaches us on page 292 of Message to the Black Man that Allah is prepared and is setting his pieces on the chessboard or the battlefield in place. The messenger of Allah writes, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them 
for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. They see the son of man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. St. Luke 21, 25 through 27. The messenger writes, you will bear me witness that we are living in such time as mentioned in the above prophecy. Signs in the sun and in the moon. The phenomena going on in the sun and its family of planets testify to the truth that something of the greatest magnitude is about to take place. The final war or battle between God and the devils in the sky. Allah God, who has power over all things, is bringing the powers of the sun, moon, and stars into display against his enemies. The fire of the sun to scorch and burn men and the vegetation and dry up the waters. The moon will eclipse her light to bring darkness upon man and upon all living things to disrupt her waves, all air communications. It's wartime. The magnetic powers of the moon will bring about such tidal waves of seas and oceans as man has never witnessed before. The sea and the waves roaring. As men's hearts fail them with fear at the sea, looking upon great tidal waves coming toward them like mountains. They also shall see such a great display of power from Allah, God, in the sky that their hearts will fail. Great earthquakes never felt before. Never felt before. Great earthquakes. Do y'all know the time? Get back in tune with your messenger. He said great earthquakes never felt before since man was upon the earth will take place. Say the Bible and Holy Quran. The Holy Quran says there will not be one city left that will not be leveled to the ground. Using this force against the enemies of Allah will make it impossible for them to survive. This is the victor and the vanquished. The messenger writes, this is all known to this world. But why are they trying to build up a defense against God? It is useless. America has it coming. Look how she has been and is still mistreating her free slaves, the so-called Negroes. The foolish so-called Negro preachers and leaders want social equality with these, their enemies. We ain't going to the UN about nothing. We know we ain't equal with these white folks. We're greater than them. We have a future. He has a demise. He's the vanquished. We stand with the victor. The white man is the dragon on land, in the water, and in the airspace of America. America is the overall beast that has us swallowed up. We in his hoods, his ghettos, his crack houses, his trap houses. That's the belly of the beast swallowed up. We in his jails and correctional facilities, which are the bowels and intestines of the beast. That's where it's most filthy. The dragon is the man and the beast is his government. Negroes 
worship the dragon. And through the dragon, the Negro gives power to the beast. Your vote for either white ruler is only to see how many of us still believes in him. They count those numbers based on that. Your vote is a show of who all are still subdued by his power, his deception, and those of us who are yet overwhelmed by his influence. Those of us who are sucked up by his society, the exact place where our children are separated from us from. A good politician is one who supports the Muslim program. What's the likelihood of one being found? So until one is found, or should one be found, vote for Allah and follow his messenger. It's wartime. It's wartime. Where is your place of refuge, black man? It's wartime. There will be a victor and there will be the vanquished. What say you? black man what have you decided everyone is prepared except you the nation of Islam represents not only survival but preparedness how to eat to live from God in person master Farah Muhammad books one and two these are sur sur survival tactics for such a time as this. What will you do. When the food is so scarce. That they give limits on how much you can buy. How much you can. Uh, serve your families. What will you do. When the food. Is rationed out. Like the commissary in his penitentiary. If you're prepared, you be fasting. If you're prepared, you be eating the most proper and basic foods. And at the proper times of the day. Preparedness. This is how we'll survive the war of Armageddon. The victor of this war will use 10 different weapons that include fire, water, hailstones, drought, and finally death. That's when the bombs will drop from the baby planes. The baby planes are the smaller planes that dock on the mother plane. The mother plane is the mother of these planes. And more superior than your white man's planes. So the mother plane is the mother of those planes as well. Whenever you read of that UFO getting shot down here and there oh they was talking about it. it was trending just before savior's day this one got shot down that one got shot down when you read of that when they say that a so-called ufo was shot down just turn the page if it was shot down then it wasn't one of ours the messenger confirmed that they cannot shoot these down. The final plague is death. 
This is when the very atoms in the atmosphere of America will explode and ignite, causing the late tight fire, consuming the vanquished. The beast and all those who will go down with him. This is the time. What we witnessed in Syria due to the earthquake that the messenger wrote of, huh? In the 60s, a death toll of about 6,000. A global problem where the UN has appealed for uh, what what is it 400 million to provide what they call desperately needed life-saving relief. What we witnessed in Syria was war games. War games defined is a military exercise carried out to test or improve tactical expertise. Only a law controls the forces of nature. That was military testing as the militaries of the earth test their made weapons. While they test their made weapons, Allah is testing his created weapons, the forces of nature, preparedness, We must remember that the judgment of the historical Pharaoh's rule and his people is a sign of the judgment of the powerful rulers of today by the unequal weapons that Allah has prepared to use in destroying them. These terrible and dreadful weapons are both on the earth and in the heavens above the earth. These are the words of Messenger Elijah Muhammad. Allah says in Isaiah, I place my words in your mouth. I cover with the palm of my hand. The God of Elijah places his own words into the mouth of Elijah. He teaches and trains him in person. He covers the mouth of Elijah, meaning that Elijah will teach only that which Allah taught with no additions nor omissions. His mouth is sealed with the palm of the hand of his God. Elijah's God has lips to speak words in a hand with a palm to hold only what he taught his messenger in his mouth. We have to get back to what Elijah, the messenger of Allah, has said and is saying. The honor boy Elijah Muhammad said, I think we should lay aside all foolishness and lay hold to the gospel of the truth of our Savior. The Savior who placed his words in the mouth of Elijah and covered those words with the palm of his hand. That Savior, Master Farad Muhammad. This is the taxicab era. Spiritually speaking, this is the taxicab era. Jesus said, just as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. Only a handful left out with Lot. So shall it be now that the Son of Man is present. This is the taxi cab era. Messenger Elijah Muhammad said during a time when he had hundreds of thousands of followers. That in that day, you'll be able to fit his followers in the taxi cab. That's today. The day when man would be in loss. 
a lot of y'all Muslims, a lot, a lot of y'all so-called Elijah Muhammad only Muslims. Y'all mope around with this sad, depressing continence. Huh? Trying to hold on to what the messenger had. Meanwhile, the true followers of Muhammad are active. The honorable boy Elijah Muhammad said, if I die or am killed, pick up the flag and carry right along. Nothing will survive this war. Not even the path to Elijah. Because at some point, once all those who will get this message, at some point, that path will burn behind us. The time is now. You're in loss. You're in mourning. You're still grieving the absence of Elijah. We have the truth. We stand on the truth and we activate on the truth. Stop praying like Muslims and acting like Christians. They sit still. They wait for Jesus. That's today. When men would be clueless. Something like the question mark on the actual board here. The actual facts board here. It's just the actual board to you. Because you go all around the facts. You see the board. Yeah, it's actual. But it's just an actual board. This is the actual facts board here. These boards are missing. In many houses, which bear the name Muhammad. If the board is missing, the question is missing. If the question is missing, then the question isn't on your mind. You will accept a bunch of love making and, 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 and white dove flying. You will accept trying to be accepted by other nations since your white daddy don't love you. The question is asked, which one will survive the war of Armageddon? We need preparedness. The tiniest amount of friction can bring this thing into action within minutes. And you over here telling us about some dream. You over here filing paperwork. The taxi cab era. The day when man would be in loss. When men would be clueless. You see the actual facts board. You see the actual facts and are yet clueless.
the same few in that taxi cab can fit into a tank. The true followers of Elijah Muhammad coming through like a steel tank. Just a few of us in it, crushing everything to powder. Simply by standing on what the Savior said. Here, Elijah. The dragon is angry that messenger Elijah Muhammad still has followers in 2023. Former students of the messenger are just as upset. Everyone now is out to make war with the remnant of his followers. They keep the commandments of God, which is here, Elijah. Revelation 12. This is the taxi cab era. There's a victor, just one victor, and there's the vanquished. Which one will survive the war of Armageddon? Is it the God of Elijah or the God of of the former students of Elijah? Is it the Caucasian Christian? Allah has already declared the victory and we believe and are acting accordingly. We're going to keep the lights. Hmm? We're going to keep the lights on, y'all. We gonna keep a place to drag you in from the battlefield. It's time. The victor and the vanquished. We don't make excuses for being few. We make sense of the time. We believe and accept what Elijah teaches us of the time. Only the truthful and the prepared ones will survive this time. Thank you for listening. Assalamu alaikum.